our hearts today. Yes. God is a good God. David is going now to Manhattan to minister again as he goes to sing right now. On eagle's wings. On eagle's wings. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. Your name is worthy to be praised, Lord. Oh God, oh that we might worship you. 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 Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus. Second book of the Old Testament. Second book of the Pentateuch. Second book of the law. The book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 19. We'll be reading verses 3 through 6. When you're there, say amen. amen. And Moses went up unto God. And the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Grace. Lord, we've done nothing to deserve all of this. A place of worship and the privilege to worship. We've come, Lord, 
naked before you today expecting to be clothed upon with your righteousness. And we ask God that your presence might be with us. Impart to us now your word. Speak your own self, Holy Spirit. Hide your servant behind the cross. And let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto thee, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. On eagles' wings. Throughout scripture, God reveals himself to us through the use of metaphors. In Exodus, God says to Israel, I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. In what ways does God carry us on eagles' wings? In what ways God carry us like an eagle carries her young? The female golden eagle best fits this description. Eagles live in most of the northern hemisphere. They're a symbol of power and courage because of their large size. I was first attracted to the eagle by Barclays Bank. Barclays Bank always, that's their insignia. On the wall of the Barclays Bank, there is a golden eagle. And it always caught my attention. And, and I, 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 I looked at the eagle and I said, that's my favorite bird. The eagle has aerial skills. And inaccessibility of nests in the wild and in the mountainous country. Their nests are usually built on cliff edges, on the ledges of the cliff, although some build their nests in trees. They keep the same nest, adding new sticks, every year until the nets become as large as six feet in diameter and five feet high. They produce few eggs and usually hatch and rear only two nestlings. The male hunts food and brings it to the nest and the female feeds the nestling. As nestlings mature, the female hunts as well. The female grows up to three feet in length and with a seven foot wingspan. Males are smaller, as with most, most uh, birds of prey, and fly upward at 85 miles per hour and downward at 140 miles per hour. The eagle is a symbol used for certain Roman legions. France used it on a Napoleon. And it is a great seal of the United States. Eagles exhibit grandeur in flight, rise above the cloud, transcend dangers below, build nests on high, make for life, travel independently, not in flocks, and they provide for and protect their family. Occasionally in scripture, God and his people are compared to eagles. 
Not only does God tell Israel, I carried you out of Egypt on eagles' wings, but he shielded them and he cared for them. He guarded them as the hat broke his eye, like an eagle that stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, that spreads its wings to catch them and carries them on its pinions. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 10 and 11 says, he found him in a desert land and in the waste, howling wilderness. He led him about, he instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. Speaking of Israel. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. Stirring of the nest is an important process. Parents should listen to this. The eagle constructs the nest from thorns, jagged stones, and pointed sticks, then covers the interior with feathers, wool, and fur from animals she has killed. And thus the nest is soft and comfortable for the nestlings. However, the time will come when she will stir up the nest. She removes the wool the feathers and the fur and picking it out piece by piece throwing it to the wind the now developing eagles find themselves pricked by the sharp edges of the sticks and thorns she no longer brings food and places it in their mouth it does take a long time for them to venture out of the comfort of the nest to spread their wings and soar to become what they were destined to become. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. When God says, I carry you on eagles' wings, he's reminding us that he cares about us as an eagle cares for her young. Somehow, we need to get in touch again with the care of God. This is the essence of faith. Believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. God exists and he cares. In Isaiah 25 verse 4 we read, for thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, where the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. God has been a refuge for the poor. A refuge for the needy in his distress. A shelter from the storm. And a shade from the heat. Peter tells us he cares for you. First Peter chapter 5 verses 5 through verses 7 through 9 says, Casting all your cares upon him. For he careth for you. Be sober. 
Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. The God of creation revealed in the Bible who appeared in Jesus Christ is not a God who lives far removed from us somewhere in this vast universe. Somewhere, some time ago, a popular song was re released by Betty Miller that said, God is watching us from a distance. I used to hear people sing that in church and it used to grieve me because nothing is further from the truth. Nothing could be further from the truth. To the contrary, I say with the psalmist, the Lord is at my right hand. Hallelujah. I shall not be moved. God is not watching us from a distance. God is by your side. You are forever in the presence of the Almighty God. So don't worry about singing that song. That God is watching us. It sounds like God is just sitting there waiting for us to trip up. Absolutely not. God is by your right hand. God holds you. And he protects you. Protects you as the eagle protects her young. God numbers the hairs on your head. Every hair on your head has a number. It takes a mighty God to do that. He knows when a sparrow falls to the ground. He knows the way each of us takes. And he cares. He says, fear not. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burnt. The flame will not set you ablaze. A hair on your body shall not singe. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. Isaiah 43, 1-3. Let's look at a few things. Number one. On eagles' wings, God carried them out of Egypt. Egypt represented an impossible situation. Without the intervention of God, Israel would be hopeless, bound in slavery in Egypt. And God asked Abraham, in Genesis chapter 18, verse 14, he asked Abraham the question, Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. And Jeremiah answers that question in Jeremiah 32, verse 17. He says, Oh, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out heart, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Jesus reminds us with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. We need to put three words in our vocabulary today, Christians. And these are the three words when you come upon hardship, 
when you are nervous about the outcome, when you are nervous about the prognosis, when you are nervous about the diagnosis, when you are nervous, these three words, just say them out loud and it defeats Satan. God is able. God is able. There is nothing impossible with God. When somebody tells you, don't bother to turn up for that interview because they don't want you. You are not qualified. Just say out loud to Satan, you are a liar. God is able. When the doctor say you're not going to make it, just tell Satan, you are a liar. God is able. Paul says it in the benediction. No unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly of the all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Egypt also represents captivity and slavery to sin. <laughs> Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Like Israel, we are redeemed by the blood of of the Lamb and the power of God. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. The blood speaks in our lives today because when all seems hopeless, we just plead the blood of Jesus. When everything seems hard and difficult, when relatives abandon us, when things are not going right with the children, we just plead the blood. When co-workers rise up against you, just plead the blood of Jesus. God brought them out on eagle's wings. Psalm 99, which David just sang, verse 11 says, I will give my angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. I love that. Oh. I love that, I love that, I love that. Yes. Some situations God protected us in, yes. we wondered how come God did that when we were making a mess of our lives, but he protected us in a situation that did not glorify his name. But he keeps his promise. He says, in all thy ways, not some ways, not only in the good ways, but in all thy ways, he will give angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Secondly, on eagles' wings, God carried them through the wilderness. On eagles' wings, God carried them through the wilderness. I wish that I could tell you today that the wilderness is not part of life. I wish that I could tell you that this is just a story that is way out yonder and you shouldn't pay attention to it. But that would be far from the truth. But God carries his people through the wilderness. He does not divert you to some other place of comfort. 
but he carries you through the wilderness. There is no detour and there is no navigation system that is saying turn back, make a legal U-turn when you can. Because God is going to carry you through the wilderness. The wilderness of sickness. The wilderness of discouragement. The wilderness of the death of your loved one. Financial stress. Marital pressures. Family problems, ministry challenges. God does not always immediately take us out of the wilderness experience. But he always brings us through. Hallelujah. Amen. He always brings us through. And you can hold on to that today. That God will carry you through. Israel faced two wilderness experiences. The wilderness of faith en route to the promised land. And later, the wilderness of disobedience for 40 years. They came to the Dead Sea, to the Red Sea, rather. And as they came to the Red Sea, the mountain on one side, Pharaoh and his troop behind them, and the sea before them. Nowhere to go. They turned to Moses and said, see what you have done. We were all right. Times were hard, but we would have made it. Now you take us here to kill us. Moses says, stand still and see the salvation of our God. God said to Moses, Moses, what are you standing there for? You got the power in your hand. Take that rod, stretch it toward the sea. Move forward. Do not halt Moses. As he stretched the rod, waters were parted. And the children of Israel passed through on dry land. No soon after they saw this magnificent miracle. They got over on the other side. Isn't that like people? They have short memory. They got over on dry land. All of Pharaoh's army were drowned. History says that even the swords and their weapons washed up ashore so the Israelites could arm themselves for their future war. But they started to complain. Lord have mercy. The melon and the garlic and all the fine things that they used to get off the edge of the plate of fear. They weren't even feasting around tables. They were getting it off the surplus of Egypt. They started to complain. And because of that, an 11 day journey had them 40 years walking in circles. A whole generation died without reaching the promise. I want to tell you this morning that many Christians 
are living the same way. And that's why their lives, their spiritual lives, their whole life is stagnant spiritually because they are at a place where all they can do is complain. Mm -hmm. They complain about everything. Mm -hmm. They come to church, they complain about church. Mm -hmm. They are home, they complain about their lives. Mm -hmm. They complain about their friends. Mm -hmm. They complain about their relatives. And all they're doing is going around in circle. Mm -hmm. Never had any fulfillment. Never had any joy. Walking in disobedience to God. Yes, they're going to go to heaven. When they get to that gate, their hands stretched out. Empty. No reward. Wilderness is a part of life. John 16 33 says these things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace in the world ye shall have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world God used wilderness experiences to display his power. He alone could bring them through. God is using your wilderness experience to prove his power in your life because he alone can bring you through. It was not the doctor who brought you through. It was not the health insurance that brought you through. It was not the money that brought you through. It was God who brought you through. It was God who brought you through. Only God. Doctors have found that out. Doctors have discovered that their parent patients who have people pray for them get better much faster and heal more completely. Then they have to throw up their hands and say, wow, this is a miracle. There's nothing I could have done for this patient. I have done the best I could. I've given them the best drugs. The best bedside manner. But they weren't supposed to be alive. It's a miracle. The neighborhood look at you and they, they, they wonder how you live so long. Yeah, they wonder how you made it to this point in your life. They wonder how come you don't have any education. How come you didn't graduate from one of the best I can Ivy League at colleges? But how come you're living like a king or a queen? But God is carrying you on angel on eagle's wings. God is lifting you up. One, he used the wilderness experience 
to display his power. Secondly, to defeat their enemy. Psalm 136, verses 16 through 20 says, To him which led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which smote great kings, for his mercy endureth forever. And slew famous kings for his mercy endureth forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endureth forever. And Og, the king of Bashan, for his mercy endureth forever. God is using your wilderness experience to defeat your enemies. To make your enemies ashamed. Last night David and I were walking and we were talking about visions and dreams and I said David I'm so happy that there are times when God speaks to me audibly. I'm so happy that I can hear his voice clearly as he guides me, as he shows me things even in this congregation. Sometimes I have to stop and roll it over in my mind and process it because I don't understand it, but God shows me. Sometimes I'm so happy I go home and I mention it to my wife because I have to have a witness that God has shown me and told me things because if I just come up here and say you'd say it's a lie. I hear his voice. He shows me my enemies. <laughs> and he tells me to pray for them. Hallelujah. He tells me to pray for them. And I kneel down and I pray for them. I pray for them and their children. I ask for salvation for their household. You see, once you do that, God will do the rest. I don't know by what means he's going to bring them to their knees, but that's up to him. It's not my will, but his will be done. Pastor, you see everything. Always tell people, I'm at a vantage point. God has placed me at a vantage point, hallelujah, where he takes me on that mountain top experience and he shows me things. Only God can defeat your enemies. He carries you on angel and eagle's wings. He takes you through the wilderness experience to defeat your enemy. He takes you through the wilderness experience to speak his word in undisturbed solitude. See, nobody wants to come with you through the wilderness. It's just you and God. Hallelujah. It's just you and God. You see, David, when you, when you, when everything is all right and in your bathroom and you're rolling off a prayer to God, 
You don't even stop to listen to God. You jump up off your knees and you wash your face and you're gone. But when you're in the wilderness experience and you don't know what to pray, it gives God an opportunity to speak to your heart. It gives God an opportunity to get your attention. And he shows you that your extremity is his opportunity. First Kings chapter 19 verse 12. As Elijah taken from the out of the cave up to the mountain to have an experience with God as God was showing him his power the verse says and after the earthquake a fire but the Lord was not in the fire and after the fire a still small voice Listen, 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 listen. A person who listens well hears what you don't hear. The same statement is made to everybody, but somebody is not listening. So when you ask, what did you hear? All you get are opinions. They are not telling you what they heard. But the, pe the person who was listening can tell you exactly what he or she heard. God brings you into the wilderness to get your attention. So you might be able to hear that still small voice. That you are able to listen to him. He brings you through the wilderness experience to test you. The wilderness prepared Israel for conquest. God tested them to teach them one thing. To trust him. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 2 and 3 says, And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart whether thou wouldst keep his commandment or no. And he humbled thee and he suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna which thou knowest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. When everything is hunky-dory, you can't experience that because you think because your bank account is good, you can afford bread. <laughs> but bam comes the hard time of what you grab. The Bible. What do you grab? The Bible. And comes the sickness. What you grab? The Bible. You're looking for an answer. You're looking for an answer. You want to hear something from God. Bomb comes a plane, flies in a building in Manhattan. What you want? The word of God. You want an answer. Wall 
street crash. What do you want? Money is helpless now. You want a word from God. God brings you through the wilderness to prepare you for conquest. A boxer doesn't just get into the ring and start boxing his opponent and can expect to win him. He has to go to the gym and the trainer is going to drive him crazy. The trainer is not going to stop driving him crazy. He's got to hit that bag with all his life. Then after he's finished thumping that bag, he's got to spar now with the trainer. Yeah. Sometimes God makes you spar with him a little bit. Yeah. Oh yes, he holds up the gloved hands and you punch at them. Yeah. And you punch at them. Mm -hmm. And he fixes your punches. <laughs> and he fixes them. Yes. And he tells you, yes, how to guard Hey, hallelujah. He tells you how to throw a hook. He tells you all of that stuff. Then he takes you running. <laughs> takes you running. Because you've got to be as quick as Cassius can. You've got to be as agile as Cassius can. You have to be a athletic as Cassius Clay. Or is he going to get your head knocked off? Because yeah. there's no helmet of salvation. You have not been tried. Friends, a lot of us in here have not been tried. We have not been tried. So you go to bed every night and say, thank you, God, for making it so easy for me. <laughs> but you've got to have need to know what it is to need something. You've got to be thirsty to really know the importance of water. can't get this fight sitting down in an easy chair. You have to be at that place where the God of the wilderness provides manna from heaven. You have to be at that place where the God of heaven provides water from the rock. You have to be at that place where a pillar of fire leads you by night. You have to be at that place where a cloud leads you by day. You have to be at that place where the Shekinah glory fills your heart to overflow. And the tabernacle is filled that when Isaiah walked into the temple, he said the glory of God filled the whole place. Hallelujah. You want to come into church on Sunday morning and experience that as you come through the door. We've had guest preachers who walk in here and they can't come further than the second row of that seat down there before they kneel down and pray. As I say, I walk in here and it just felt different. It just felt different. I, I had to stop. People are passing here and they say, we say, come in and pray. And they stop at the door and they say, oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. What a beautiful, nice place. I feel so good in here. Some ladies walked in here and they wouldn't wear their shoes past that door. They were standing on holy ground. They were standing. Thank you. Glory. 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 
this experience. Wilderness experience reminds us that God is in the midst of his people and that he will bring you through. Early and last week, on eagles' wings, God carried them into the promised land. God always directs us toward his promise for our lives. A land flowing with milk and honey. No cross, no crown. No cross, no crown. You're going to get to the land that is flourishing but you're going to walk through a barrier. That's paradox. But it's true. You're going to get to the land of milk and honey. But God says he's carrying it, carrying you through so he can test your humility. Because he's going to bring you to prosperity. But a lot of people cannot handle prosperity. Easy come, easy go. We don't know how to humble ourselves. And if you can't humble yourself with five dollars, how are you going to humble yourself with five million? You're dying to get that five million to kick some people. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> You're dying to get just two thousand dollars to kick somebody. Don't know how to humble yourself. So God is bringing you through so you can understand the plight of others when you have arrived at where he wants to bring you to. God humble yourself. He says, I brought you through so that you might humble yourself. Exodus chapter 3 verse 8 says, And I am come down to deliver them out of the land of e the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the la that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. John 10.10 10 says, The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come, that they might have life and that they might have it more abundant. The promised land is not perfect. There are enemies to face in the promised land. There are battles to fight in the promised land. There are temptations to conquer in the promised land. There are cities to build in the promised land. There are vineyards to plant in the promised land. But God has already built your character with the wilderness experience. There's nothing more the devil can throw at you now. He has thrown everything he can at you and you have overcome now you can manage what God has promised you if you have the right motive you're going to make it the last verse of the song we did for the prayer this morning speaks about our motives if you have the right motive you're going to make it. If you have learned anything from your wilderness experience, 
you are going to apply it to your lives and you are going to make it. God brings us out of sin for the sole purpose of bringing us into a life of promise. The promise represents life lived in the fullness of his presence and blessing. The promise is connected with God's purpose for our lives. The blessing abides where he will, where his will is obeyed and his purpose is fulfilled. That's what the scripture says. That blessings are conditioned to your obedience. There is a condition for blessing. You have to live in obedience. Perhaps you need to be carried by God. You're not alone in this situation. God knows where you are. And he cares for you. He knows what you're going through. He knows that the sand is hot under your feet. He knows that the sandstorm and the coldness of the wilderness can become unfair. He knows that there are wilderness serpents that springs up at you from time to time. He knows that there are little fireflies that stings you in the wilderness. He knows what you're going through. God is not deaf, neither is he blind. He sees where you are and he hears your cry. But he has a promise for you. I will carry you on eagle's wings. Out of all your impossible situations, I will carry you on eagle's wings through your wilderness experiences. I will carry you on eagle's wings to the fullness of my purpose for your life. He'll never let you fly with closed eyes. He's there ready to swoop down. See, so that's why you can you can take the risk, you know. Because God is watching. Not from a distance. But he's there. And he's watching. As he wades behind you. He's watching you. And as you look like you're weak, he swoops under you. He spreads his wings out. He grabs you on the pinions of his wings. On the very wing tip. He bears you up. And he will lift you up on eagle's wings. God bless you.
Number 496. Number 496. No, whatever. Like Jesus. No one ever cared for you. Like Jesus. No one cares for you. Like Jesus. And everybody forgets you till Sunday. God cares for you during the week. When everyone forgets you. God still cares for you. This is a wonderful hymn. And if you're here this morning and you're going through your wilderness experience but you can't understand it, the altar is open. Amen. God is here to reaffirm and to confirm to you that he will bear you up on eagles' wings. shall have realized 
the goodness and the fullness of your purpose that we will be able to shout hallelujah to your name. Praise God who carried me through. Thank you. Bless us all individually now. Take us home safely. Meet your will, Lord. Carry us through this week's trials and temptations as you make ways of escape for us as we leave ourselves entirely in your hands. Yes. Saying thanks in Jesus' name. Yes. Everyone say Amen. 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 Our closing hymn is hymn number 549. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward round. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground.
please come back to 6 p.m. service. Amen. Will all the youth please see me in a